Greg, multiple universes seems to be the idea of the moment. Everybody's talking about it. Physicists, cosmologists, theologians, each have their own spin, to be sure. But everyone's taking this very seriously. It's not metaphor. They're looking upon this to solve problems, to deal with reality. You have a unique view because you're both a physicist, astronomer, and a science fiction writer. In fact, one of your books, Cosm, you postulated the idea of creating a, a universe on your desktop. Uh, so as you, as you feel this idea of a multiple universe, multiverse, what, what visions do you have of it? Well, I wrote that novel, Cosm, to deal with my favorite universe that gets rid of what I call shopper's anxiety about universes. <laughs> uh, you know, how do you choose? Uh, <laughs> because you could explain the universe, this one, by saying, look, we now know theoretically, Alan Guth and others have published papers on this, about how you could, at least conceptually, uh, torque and contort space-time so that you cause the spontaneous generation of another universe, which could look like this big in our universe. So I wrote a novel set at my own institution, uh, UC Irvine, about a black woman particle physicist who accidentally does this in the uh, heavy iron, iron collider on Brookhaven. <laughs> and all the academic politics, which I love to satirize because it's hard to believe it's really true, uh, ensues, but she also studies this universe because you can look into it and its time is accelerating exponentially. So you get to see the evolution of a whole universe. And only at the end of the universe does she understand, because she then sees this universe going beyond what we know and life spreading out and populating and light, literally lighting up galaxies, that this universe got here because it's a lab experiment. I mean, our universe is a lab experiment, and the proof that it could be is because she was able to do it. And the reason that intelligence exists in these universes is because it takes intelligence to do the lab. <laughs> and the lab makes a universe which then is like this universe. It's hospitable to life. So life evolves there. They make universes, and it goes on in this Darwinian way. Now, that, that, that is a great story. It was a great book. <laughs> But can we take it a little seriously, too? I mean, is, might this be the real reality as you see it? It's possible. Uh, the whole point about multiple universes is that theory seems to imply it in various different ways. But we don't know yet which theory makes any sense. So it's useful to explore them all. I mean, it's, it's multiple models of the multiple universe. So I just had fun playing with the idea because I could see it was becoming more popular and that physicists were taking it seriously. So take it as it, at its assumptions uh, and, and let's see if we can make one because you see, if we could make one, it would be a very good solid proof for this model of multiple universes and would strongly imply that maybe we're in the middle of somebody else's experiment. Well, certainly <laughs> if multiple universes could develop on the techniques that you said or any, anything remotely like that, the odds that we were the very first one are vanishingly small. Right. So almost, <laughs> if it's possible, by certainty, we would be one of the later generations, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what are the implications of that? Well, it doesn't solve the initial, val initial value problem. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, you can't, I guess. Uh, but it also implies that we shouldn't be so anxious about the fate of life and so forth. Certainly in this universe we should, but it implies that life is going to propagate forever because intelligent life will probably keep start, uh, making these universes and there will always be intelligence in some universe. Uh, and therefore it's ir irreducible. The universe is there because of intelligence, not the other way around. And that could, if I put on the hat of a theologian and it reshapes my brainwaves in some way, that could be a support, if not a proof, for the existence of a creator. 
And that's what theology is based upon. Do, so doesn't your ideas give support to theology? Well, first, it implies that, that the creator of this universe was wearing a lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> metaphorically, I think theologians would agree with that. <laughs> Fine. God the experimenter. Uh, not God the theorist. <laughs> and also it implies that the theologian is here because of intelligence and a prior universe. And therefore, the theologian is an inextricably part of the phenomena himself, and therefore it's in a sense self-reflexive. Theology arises as an attempt to understand these issues. Why are we here? Sure. And maybe the ability to ask that question is primary in intelligence, the intelligence that is why we're here. Is this an infinite regress, putting aside theology, hmm. and staying in hard physics, and whether we are the first or whether we are the, in some long chain of experiments, hopefully they're getting better, maybe not, I'm not sure sometimes, um, is how real can this be? I mean, is this something that's just theoretical, or might this actually be something that we can really engineer in the future? Well, first, let's put it this way. It would be the first theological experiment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Try to get to a grant it. from the Pope yeah. to see if you could do it. Uh, notice it also implies that a universe that's really good at creating these universes, i.e. that has full employment for physicists, uh, <laughs> is one that produces more universes. And therefore, by Darwinian principles, Self -self. downstream, you get more and more of this kind of universe, the one that produces lots of physicists and who do this thing, and is interested for these theological reasons. So it's completely unsurprising that, since we're downstream in this sequence, that we have these concerns. They're completely natural. They came with the universe. Have you looked at some practical considerations as an engineer? as an old engineer, uh, the energy <laughs> required to do something like this, is, the, is that even theoretically possible within the confines of what we have? Oh, yes. And in fact, the reason that I wrote it and set it at the Brookhaven Accelerator is because just possibly, because we don't know these parameters very well, the energy in that experiment, which is running right now, could have done this. Mm. That's why they had a special panel on looking at unexpected outcomes this experiment might have. Mm -hmm. I think Frank Wilczek was the chairman of it. Uh, and I was amused to read the report because it came out a couple of years after my novel, and it was about the same worry. <laughs> and they got it funded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you got some royalties too. <laughs> <laughs> at the experiment, they have a sign on one of the detectors that says, COSM experiment. Really? They sent me a photograph of it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and cause, the scene in Cosm is set at that detector.